Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining me here. My name is Dan. This is the Sellersville Theater, and this is Sound Booth Sessions, our weekly live stream show where we feature a concert and a conversation with an artist we love. Let's hear it for the man who, uh, let's see, in 2019, he was the winner of the Champion of Justice Humanitarian Award given by the National Association of Criminal Justice Lawyers. So that's quite an achievement, and uh, I'm sure you're going to see why, and we will talk about it later. Please welcome, all the way from Delaware, the amazing John Flynn. American grandfather found his grandson crying after school and discovered from the sobbing child that playground will be heaven cruel. I wish that I could hurt him, said the child. I can't think that's what I'll be That will be me sad a good grandfather And I'll know the dark wolf is taking you There are two wolves There are two wolves And we need each other and darkness The other wolf is love and light The old man put his arms around the child revenge When you try to hurt the one who's hurt you You become a little more like them The old man said I know you are feeling Being human I have Child, do not fear this battle. Though each wolf will make the other bleed, it is in your power. Choose the victor. The wolf that wins will be the one you feed. There are two. Rage, 
thank you. That's the first time I've heard applause in such a long time, man. That was awesome. I'm on a stage. I can't believe it. I've been looking forward to this. It's great to be back at the Sellersville Theater. It's great to have you, John. Well, his name was Woody Guthrie and way back in 1912. He came into this world kicking and a fussing. We came to love him well for life's been trying to tell how we all could change the things that we've been cussing. We just gotta do like Woody done, like Woody done. We just gotta do like Woody done. When folks said you cannot change things, Woody said, oh yes I can. Cause a man can make a difference and that difference made the man. A hero we can turn to when it's time to make a stand. And our lesser angels say to cut and run. Just gotta do like Woody did. His name was Woody Guthrie, and we back in 1912. He commenced the life of holy rabble rousing. Now the beat up guitar cases and them bound for glory faces. You can number his disciples by the thousand, and I'm one. But you just gotta do like Woody done, like Woody done. Just wanna do like Woody done. When folks said you cannot change things, Woody said, Oh yes I can. Cause a man can make a difference, and that difference made the man. A hero we can turn to when it's time to make a stand. And our lesser angels say to cut and run. You just gotta do like Woody done. There ain't much right where the mouth kept shut tight When your duty just might be to shout And there ain't much wrong that the soul in a song Can't make better if you sing it out Just sing it Wilson Guthrie and some hundred years ago he came into this life of kicking and yelling and he never really quit and we're better cause of it and the brave and shining truth that he was telling we just gotta do like Woody done like Woody done and Pete too just gotta do like Woody done when folks said you cannot change things, Woody said, oh, yes I can. Cause a man can make a difference and a woman can make a difference. You know folks can make a difference. And that difference made the man a hero we can turn to when it's time to make a stand. And it's time to make a stand. And our lesser angels say to cut and run. A stand is being made. Just gotta do like Woody done. Thank you. So, uh, here's a, a song about some women who made a difference, and I'd like to dedicate it to Kamala Harris and Stacey Abrams. And uh, looking forward to uh, being able to say Madam Vice President. Said, I don't know what the hell you think you're proving Rosa said, I paid my dime Mister, I'm not moving She was warned It was explained to her Nevertheless, she 
persisted Lala said I'm sorry but I won't follow your rules I am not afraid and I'm not staying home from school She was warned It was explained to her Thank you. There's there's applause in the comment section as well, John. I want you to know. All right. Well, thank you, commenters. <laughs> uh, I've been doing a, a little streaming uh, series uh, from my home in Northern Delaware the past uh, six, seven weeks, I guess. So um, it's it's just been a way to try and you know, well, number one, to to, to keep in shape as a performer because I was I was getting. I, I knew I was uh, losing a stitch or two, you know, and uh, but just to keep connected to folks. Uh, and anyway, each week we uh, we take we pull a, uh, a like a, a request out of a hat. So so folks send me a request each week. John at johnflynn.net is my email address, and and uh, and I print them up and I put them in a little top hat, and, and we pull them out each week. And anyway, this is a request that didn't make it to the top hat because I'm not doing uh, my my bad show tonight. BAD stands for Busk at Dusk, which is the Busk name of my dusk. little series at home. Um, but anyway, this was something that, that, that somebody wrote into me with, and it seemed like a great uh, a song for this week, especially when this country has uh, raised itself up and, and raised its voice. So this is called Put Your Freedom Where Your Mouth Is. I haven't done this one in a long time. There's a young man in a prison somewhere far across the sea, and his body's being broken in the name of you and me, and he's charged with no offenses. And convicted of no crime He's protected by no law there And he's running out of time Put your freedom where your mouth is In a land of liberty Tortured man is free. There's a woman being beat. 
by the police in a place where she wears her subjugation like a veil across her face. It's a monster we created so we don't dare to protest. Cause it's oil is like black milk and we suck all at its breast but your freedom where your mouth is in a land of liberty you can't say nothing about this there's no beaten woman's grief In a child's belly's empty And he's crying from the pain And his mother soon will leave him To the virus in her veins And his future ain't much brighter Than the color of his skin if you have not heard him weeping, then it's time that you begin to put your freedom where your mouth is in a lane liberty. You can't say nothing about this, cause no hungry child is free. There's a student And he's picking up his textbooks In the dirt Cause they did not like the slogan He had printed on his shirt And they say he got off easy And they say next time he won't but he'll keep wearing that t-shirt Because they win if you don't Put your freedom where your mouth is In a land of liberty You can't say nothing about this Cause no silenced person's free Thank you. Oh my goodness, John! Uh, welcome to the show. Is now a good time to hop in and say hello to you? Yeah, sure is. You want to keep rolling? Sure is. No, you're on quite a roll, my friend. Say, say hello. <laughs> well, hello, John Flynn. Welcome to the show. I have a feeling I'm going to be a mess. Like after every song, I'm going to be crying. So, um, hello. How are you? Uh, welcome. So glad to have you here. Uh, I've been absolutely enjoying sort of listening back through your catalog once again and sort of, oh my gosh, you have so many uh, important and wonderful things to say and you say it in such a beautiful way. So thank you, first of all. Thank you, brother. For that. Um, I've been enjoying your, uh, your busks at dawn. Um, just So first of all, I guess let's say welcome to anybody who is uh, is joining us from your Busk at Dawn show. Busk at Dusk. Busk at Dusk, I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah, songwriters uh, got to rhyme it, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course, I just got the wrong D um, <laughs> in about 12 hours off. Um, so uh, just let, let's talk about Busk at Dusk real quick, um, because you seem to have adapted to the technology. I um I, I wouldn't know if, if, if an acoustic folk folk songwriter would, would be so nimble at adapting to uh, this sort of virtual context, and yet you have uh, done so very well. Um, tell me about the transition from uh, to, to getting getting into this live stream game. Um, well, thank you for the compliment. Uh, I owe a lot of it to the, the, the coaching I had from my uh, my. Uh, 
producer Harvey, okay. also, also known in Philadelphia environs as Harvey in the morning. So Harvey he, in the morning, of Harvey course. knows his, his way around the tech side of yes. things, uh, being a, a great recording engineer and producer as, as well as a broadcaster and a whole bunch of other stuff. Very good. And and so he, he coached me up on this. I started out, you know, just the total purist, just shouting at my laptop. You yes. Know? And, and my, I think my first three, four, five shows were like that. And right. then the Philadelphia Folk Festival was virtual this year, and they mm-hmm. had me uh, do some of the hosting duties oh. as, as well as perform. Nice. Excuse me. And um, uh, so being at the Folk Festival and kind of spending the weekend um, seeing what everybody else was up to and how good they sounded compared to me shouting at my laptop. Right. I decided to try and up my game and... So we're, you know, we're, and I'm the like least techie person in the world, as you can tell, having worked with me in sound checks. So uh, I'm glad that it's coming off like not not too bad. You're doing you're doing all right. You're doing great. You're reaching the people. Um, well, let's, you know, can, can we go back for a minute, John? Way way back to 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 the beginning of of John Flynn, and I'm 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 curious where what were you listening to in your house growing up? What was the music that was playing? And uh, and what were the things that sort of started you on the path of of becoming the the songwriter you are now? Um, my uncle Kevin uh, lent me his guitar for a couple of weeks when he got back from Okinawa. He was in the Marine Corps, and mm. uh, when he when he came home, he, he he dropped his guitar off and taught me a few chords and some Kingston Trio songs and and yeah. some Pete Seeger and uh, Woody Guthrie and uh, and even a, a, a I think. By the time I get to Phoenix, was on the radio at that point. The, 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 at the time, I was learning to play the guitar, so that was one of the first songs I ever learned, and I, I became a big Glenn Campbell fan. Mm. And then I just uh, anything that that had an acoustic guitar in it, I you know, I I just wanted to. I was a shy kid. I still am a shy old person, <laughs> so I, I find it easier. Uh, or, or for a long time, I found it easier to communicate with, with people through music. Mm. Um, now that's that's changed because now I, I, I spend a lot of time, or I, up till the pandemic, I spent a lot of time in prisons mm. without a guitar, uh, and, and we work with incarcerated and returning citizens. So I had to kind of get over that that part of my personality. But music helped me make that bridge, I think. Mm. Well, okay, so 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 so. Was the plan for you always to to get into to music and and songwriting and sort of have that be the vehicle that you uh, use to sort of change the world? Uh, using the word plan would give me way way too much credit. You know, <laughs> I, I I just I just kept going a little farther down the path. Mm-hmm. You know, th- thinking that I can still turn back and you know do something constructive with my life, like you know sell insurance or something. And right. Uh, the important uh, stuff, right? Well, yeah. or, you know, just make make a more solid or dependable kind of living. Right. And so, so I, I think I probably bought in 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 five year increments. <laughs> you know, when mm. I got out of college, mm-hmm. I was going to go to law school, and I went to Nashville instead. And I signed I, I signed a publishing contract and and had something on the radio pretty quick. So that got me down the road for five years, and, wow. and then not not much happened. And I was thinking about you know retracing my steps and then you get another little break it was always it was always just enough to keep me in the game and and until a point came along where i just thought no this is actually you know who i am yeah. uh and i'm having too too much fun to turn back now right you know was there a particular um song or or musical moment that kind of kicked it all off i mean you so you got that guitar you learned that song when was that first time that that you either played a song or wrote a song that like you know the clouds parted i don't know but um i think i get a little peek at the sun every time i write a song you know or i, I feel yeah. like i do well what where I, rem- did that I remember start? i remember hearing uh fire and rain the first time and oh, just brother. and just being transformed mm. you know i mean the, there was something so intimate and uh and personal in that song that i'd never I, I had never experienced before from you know from a record, mm. um, and and so I think that 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 made a big impression. And then and when I discovered you know guys like Christopherson and, and Prine and and we you know we we came up through I mean people my age came up through the, like the, the golden age of singer songwriters and mm. 
it, it was just an abundance of riches. Hmm. Who, who, uh, is there anybody nowadays that, that sort of has your ear? Um, in a similar way that's kind of touching on some of those same qualities? I'm, I'm not good at keeping up with uh, new music. So sure. my, my kids, uh, from time to time, will, will tune me in. Right. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm stuck in a, in, in, a, in a time loop, I think, with a lot of the guys that I listen to because they're my heroes. Right. Well, right now, when, when you need that little jolt of inspiration, who, who, do you, who do you go back to to sort of like get a kick in the pants? Uh, the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I love listening to a new album because, because of the, the choices that I know I would make. Like you're, you're coming up to a place where the, the, the songwriter goes one way and, and my mind goes another way. And that's mm. almost the beginning of a new song. Just listening, uh-huh. to, just listening to a great new song, can, can, you can spin off. All, all on your own. Like I, I heard Woody uh, Guthrie's advice to a songwriter. Just, he said, "Just just take somebody else's song, and where they sing low, you sing high, and where they sing fast, you sing slow. And at, at the yeah. end of it, you'll <laughs> you'll have your own song. And I, it really is on you know, on one level that simple. Um, so for me, it's 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 more about when when something just uh, grabs me by the throat or the heart." And just wrestles me to the ground, and I and I have to find a way to talk about it, and that's when I go for the guitar. Mm, well said. Well, would you mind playing some more songs for us? Restless to the ground. Yeah. Oh well. Um, this is out of uh, this is out of order because because Daniel asked for a set list, and I and I was going to try and s- stay with it, but bah. our uh, our discussion kind of prompted this one because it. it this is, this, this is a, a song that kind of speaks to that, that point where I started to realize that, that, that this was my road for better or worse. It's called Song or Singwriter. I am what I ain't never gonna be anything but I didn't do what I did I do I don't know what I can't regret things I can't rearrange I'm too young to quit And I'm too old to change What I do for love So call me a saint or a slut I am what I ain't never gonna be anything but I am what I ain't never gonna be anything but I'm done trying to stick out my chest or suck in my gut I've seen parts of heaven and pieces of hell Got my guitar and my stories to tell I guess when it gets right down to the meat of the nut I am what I ain't never gonna be anything but But I got my children I got my friends Got my songs And a beautiful woman I love so So if no pot of gold waits This rainbow's end I'll still be the richest man I know I am what I ain't never gonna be anything but Too proud to crawl and a little too humble to strut I started out as just one of the boys They broke up the band but I kept making noise Despite their advice about getting a job and hair cut I am what I ain't never gonna be anything but 
I don't give a damn if I live in a mansion or a hut. My wife hates that line. <laughs> I am what I ain't never gonna be anything but. Nice one. Thank you. Just because you mentioned your kids, I'm wondering, what was the, how did you introduce them to music? Did you have a plan? Uh, no, there's that word again, Daniel. Plan, sorry. <laughs> it's not, uh, it's, I think I've, I, anytime I, I put together a plan, it was such a humbling experience, you know? <laughs> Uh, basically, that was writing down the way things weren't going to happen. Uh -huh. And um, but music was always—I mean, it was always in our home. As a matter of fact, three of my kids uh, are incredibly gifted. Three of the four are incredibly gifted musicians. I think wow. the fourth might have some talent too, but I don't think he's admitted it to himself. <laughs> so uh, there's, you know, when, when we get together, a lot of times. Um, Especially around this time of year, our, our, our Thanksgiving celebrations have always been legendary in the Flynn clan. Um, and uh, they, they all play guitar, they all write music, uh, oh. and they're all be better musicians than me, so. Ain't no love without freedom. Ain't no freedom. Without justice, ain't no justice. Without mercy, ain't no mercy. Without love, I haven't been able to do this in eight months, but I'm gonna have a sing along here. <laughs> ain't no love without freedom. Without freedom, ain't no freedom. Ain't no freedom without justice. Without justice, ain't no justice. Ain't no justice without mercy. Ain't no mercy. Ain't no mercy without love. For those of you listening at home, they all sang really loud. Fat man talking about bootstraps while he's hitting out of sand traps. Thin man scrounging around for food scraps while the car he's sleeping in is leaking oil from its valve seals as the bankers do it car and the DA is scoring plea deals as the choir sings amen. Ain't no love without freedom. Ain't no freedom without justice. Ain't no justice without mercy. Ain't no mercy without love. Politicians flash inside. As the cops pull down their visors And we hoard hand sanitizer As the world we're watching burn We'll grow hard just to live in And find a damn to give in Till we wake up to what we've been Taking far too long to learn Ain't no Ain't no justice 
John, I have to share with you that David Wallard is very excited to hear Circle of Love. Susan Bickford says, we are singing along at home. Jill Azea says, brilliant and loves it. My Aunt Nilsa is singing and dancing at home in her chair. And Judy Baszler says she was harmonizing. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> this is, uh, I guess, my most recent uh, release. And it's a song I'm ashamed it took me so long to write. Oh, from some place inside of me, like something in a dream. The question keeps arising, and it makes me want to stream. Can we turn our back again upon these anguish cries? our own eyes how many bodies how many lives left in tatters how many more black lives will it take before black lives matter Whoa. ignorance peace fear my friend fear will lead to hate worse than all of this is our How many more black lives will be dead before black lives matter? Oh, well, you raise your eyebrows as you close your pink eyelids. You say all lives matter. I cry, God, I wish they. Bending you. Well, I got a hunch that being killed offends black people too. In fact, the label seems to bother you more than the crime. It'd be worth pondering, but answer me in this meantime. How many bodies, how many lives left in tatters? How many more black lives will it take before black lives matter? How many daughters? Brothers and sons and fathers How many more black lives will we take Before black lives matter Thank you This next song was inspired by A, a conversation I had in Gander Hill Prison uh, For the last 15 years I've been spending time working with some of the men, kind of helping them uh, get ready for the day they uh, get released back into society. I'm the executive director of a, a program called New Beginnings Next Step. Now, the New Beginnings part is the work that we do with guys while they're in prison. And the next step part is uh, the work that we do with them. We continue these relationships when they get home. Um, I don't think people change because of ideas. I think people change when they do change. They change because of relationships. And these relationships have proven to be invaluable in kind of helping guys build the, the, the resilience necessary to get up when life knocks them down. Um, because no matter how well you prepare or how much you want to do well when, when, you, when you come out of prison, you're, you're climbing such a steep hill. And, and something, because of the nature of existence, of being a human being, something's going to come along and knock you on your ass. And those moments are, are incredibly vulnerable for, for, for guys who are trying to do something new with their lives. And the fact that we, we build a kind of a community of returning citizens on the outside uh, that, that 
almost mentor each other, that, that almost act like, like sponsors in a 12-step program. Uh, gives guys uh, that momentary place to turn when, when they get a case of uh, what my guys call the efforts, the, you know, uh, when they say, screw this. And, and they go back to what they know. Uh, they go back to survival brain, survival mode. So anyway, uh, we we I, I raise money for uh, for new beginnings and and ten percent of the the donations to my busk at dusk, my bad shows, uh, goes to the organization, because the first year out of prison we give you bus car, uh, bus passes, and we give we give you uh, gift cards uh, for the local grocery store. Uh, it's just a twenty five dollar gift card to pick up some odds and ends each week, and 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 a way to get get around to job interviews or get to work uh, with your bus pass. Um, it's not a lot, but but it's made a difference in a lot of lives. And uh, from time to time, the guys allow me to share stories that they tell in in our in our group work. And this this song is an example of of uh, a story that was told to me by a young man named Travis. And this song is dedicated to stepmoms and stepdads, because uh, like Travis said, they're the ones who step up. It's called the Prodigal Father. Two weeks out of prison, standing at the door Of the man who'd married his ex-wife The man who'd been providing for the family he had lost Taking his place in his child's life He'd hidden down the block and watched his ex-wife drive away Seen his little boy drive off with her He rang the bell and waited Till the man answered the door And to that frightened man he said these words Thank you for loving my son I know he thought I abandoned him It's good to know he's got someone Thank you for loving my son Humbly he stood there Speaking through that locked screen door Of the grateful feeling in his soul Of years he'd wake in prison Knowing someone kind would pour Cheerios into his child's bowl He said, I know from his mother That you treat him as your own That the boy's been growing strong and true He's better off without me So don't tell him I was here Mister, I just had to say to you Thank you for loving my son I know he thought I abandoned him It's good to know he's got someone Thank you for loving my son And just said you're welcome as he unlocked that screen door. The shook hands and he turned and walked away. He must have walked for hours, then he stopped into a church. He prayed, and in his heart heard a voice say, Thank you for loving my son. I know he thought I abandoned him It's good to know he's got someone Thank you for loving my son Thank you for loving my son
Oh, what a song. Oh my gosh. Thank you, man. How's our uh, comments? We doing okay, you guys? Oh, still hanging in there? Everybody's crying. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Good. That's what we need. Uh, to do make everyone cry. Brian Joyce shares. I've heard this a dozen times, brother. Still, my tears are flowing. Uh, David Waller shares. Very true of my own stepdad, who I lost this year. Thank you. Oh, God bless you, David. Man. Wow. Well, that's that's quite a thing you do with that program, John. Do you, do you mind sharing with us? How did you first uh, come to be associated with New Beginnings? How, how, what was the first um, interaction you had? Uh, a Franciscan friar named Brother David mm-hmm. uh, uh, got me involved. David was uh, helped me work through some issues, you know, kind of, kind of as a spiritual advisor. And he used to he actually founded the program, and he started uh, you know uh, he started it at Gander Hill, and, and he was being transferred. Um, about 15 years ago, he was transferred to Silver Spring, Maryland, where he's now a chaplain at the Bethesda uh, Walter Reed uh, Medical Complex there. Um, so he asked me if I'd take over for him. And uh, uh, for a while, uh, I, I, I kind of hung on by my fingertips. I really sucked at it. Um, I, I, I didn't know at all what I was doing. I'd, I'd come in with, with magazine articles and handouts and you know a syllabus and... And I'd be talking to guys whose whose lives had been so completely different than mine, you know. Mm. Um, and I, what you were you were trying to? Te- I was trying to teach. teach. Them I was trying to yeah. I right. was trying to fix. I was trying. I was trying to, you know. I was trying to help, which is what we do. And you know, I, I last couple of years I've gotten to know a little bit of uh, Father Greg Boyle, who runs Homeboy Industries out in, in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. uh, which is the largest and most successful gang intervention ministry oh, in, wow. the, in the world. And 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 Greg told me, he said, you know, we can't we can't fix or save anybody. All we can do is love them, and loving them fixes and saves us. So, you know, just go in there and be that, that tender glance, you know, uh, of, of, of love. And, and that'll save you. And that's, that's your responsibility. Wow. You know, so that, and that, and that speaks to, to going into, into relationship. You know, that, that, that's what it's all about. Building kind of trust. Uh, building the ability to, you know, rely on each mm. other. So, yeah. But now you've you've altered that program, or you've taken that that program a, an additional step uh, uh, with this next steps uh, yeah. uh, chapter. Well, and, the, yeah, the, go ahead. So, to, to tell, so well, tell they us had about that. The, the, David ran the Franciscan Center in Wilmington, and a lot of really wonderful ministries came out of the center. And there was one uh, run by a lady named Jean Toy called Next Step, and you know. It, it it had kind of fallen into darkness uh, and 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 so we because uh, Jean Jean and I became friends and she still had a checking account with some money in it so we said so we said let's start up next step again anyway some of our guys were getting out of prison at mm-hmm. one point this is about seven eight years ago mm-hmm. and uh, they said can we do this on the outside can we get together once a week for coffee and just kick stuff around and because it it helps you know holding each other accountable and. And having somebody call you on your BS and on your game, and you know, um, having stuff, somebody to bounce stuff off of, and so we started meeting at the Brouhaha in Wilmington on Market Street. We, you know, I had, I had one of the the uh, gnarliest looking uh, bunch of friends, and we meet on Wednesday <laughs> afternoon and get a lot of raised eyebrows. And all these guys, I mean, there's six, seven guys, all of them wanted the most. Uh, expensive drink <laughs> coffee drink like you know nobody would have a, a, a cup of joe it was always it was like low fat latte with sprinkles <laughs> and i was i was spending like 70 dollars a week on coffee and i thought i can't do this um so i i threw the friends meeting house in wilmington the friends there and 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 through some some friends of mine who were teachers at ridley high school where i where i grew up in delaware county uh i, I started to gather some volunteers together and it really took off. And, and the, fact that, the fact that the guys in prison were now hearing stories about the guys out of prison, mm. hearing success stories, and guys right. that they shared a, a cell with, are, you know, he's now holding down a job, he's got an apartment, he just bought a car, he's reunited with his daughter, he's, you know, 
this is the stuff we used to talk about, and now he's doing it. And I'm hearing these stories every week when Flynn comes and, and talks to us. So now I believe you know, it's possible for me. So it, it was like it was building this bridge, and instantly the, it, the work inside the prison became much uh, more potent and effective. And so one feeds the other. Um, so we became a nonprofit about four years ago, and uh, you know we're just we're just trying to see where it takes us. Wow. Um, th- this song has kind of become emblematic, I think, of my work with with the guys because uh, th- this song was inspired by a, a picture, of, a photograph of a bowl that had been broken and put back together using an ancient technique called kintsugi, and kintsugi. Uh, rather than uh, trying to disguise the fact that the bowl has been shattered, Kintsugi uh, almost uh, accentuates the brokenness because they use precious metal in the glue, you know, in, and, and, uh, in, the, in the lacquer, so, so that there are the seams of gold or silver that run through the pottery. And the, the piece transcends its original form and becomes something exquisite and unique, you know, and incredibly beautiful because it was broken, you know. And, and this, this was such a, a, a powerful metaphor for me uh, for the work that we were doing in the prison because guys were sharing from their brokenness rather than, rather than denying it and hiding it, which, we, which is all in our nature to do. It's, it's our, usually it's our, it's our go-to move. But these guys very courageously would share from that, that place of brokenness in order to help somebody else off their knees. And then that, that place of brokenness became, like I said, exquisite and beautiful. So this is called Kintsugi. Japan around the 15th century uses gold and silver to mend broken pottery rebinding the shattered pieces so exquisitely Kintsugi Kintsugi the tea bowl of a shogun had been broken and he frowned Ugly metal staples with which his artisans bound the pieces back together, so a bold new way was found. Kintsugi, Kintsugi, you are beautiful because your heart is broken, because you have the wisdom. And that kindness and the grace to be beautiful Just let your heart be open Smile for me and let me kiss The tears upon your face Flashing streaks of lightning in a dark and stormy sky Like brilliant streams of lava on a midnight mountainside Seams that prove our wounds now we no longer choose to hide Kintsugi Kintsugi You are beautiful Because your heart has broken Cause you have the wisdom and that courage and the grace to be beautiful. Just let your heart be open, smile for me and let me kiss the tears upon your face. Let me see the places where they hurt you, deep in the marrow.
Fear no lasting damage, fear no violence or decay. From the potter's wheel, love's fingerprints are on this clay. And through our perfect brokenness, we each can find a way. Kintsugi, 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 Kintsugi. Beautiful. Uh, Heidi Bondenheimer uh, shares that John, you are a great you are great at healing brokenness with lots of hearts. <laughs> Love you, Heidi. John, do you do you have a, a an opportunity to to share these songs with uh, with the folks in your group? I, I I understand that it's not a musical relationship that you have with them necessarily, but do you wind up performing for them ever? Yeah. Well, uh, the. Uh the warden's secretary uh, saw a picture of me singing at Citizens Bank Park. Uh-huh. Uh, it was when the Phillies were in the, uh, the, the league championship series. Uh, so what was that back in, in eight or nine? Mm. And um, they ran my picture in the news journal. And she called me up. And she said, we didn't know you were a big star. Cause, <laughs> I said, trust me, I'm not. <laughs> but, but she said, would you do a concert for us at the prison? Oh, wow. So ever since then... Uh, we've done regular uh, uh, concerts at, at 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 Gander Hill and oh, man. and even down in, uh, uh, in in Georgetown at the Sussex Correctional Institution, um, and uh, it's it's funny because at Gander Hill uh, they have like a, a an in house uh, uh, radio station or you know the, so they 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 play music uh, and and after my third or fourth appearance there they started playing my music on uh, Wednesdays. They called it Yahoo Wednesday. Uh, Yahoo Wednesday? Uh, you know, it was probably the only non-hip-hop music that was getting played in the prison. And, wow. And that's, they didn't know what this music was called, so they called it <laughs> Yahoo music. <but. laughs> wow. Um, I, I'm curious, what, uh, so for a song like that, what, what has the reaction been? Guys, uh... I'm thinking of two guys specifically who reacted very personally to that. That that mm-hmm. song means a whole a whole lot to them. I think folks who who are in recovery uh, are kind of really get that song as well. Yeah. You know, um, so and like 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 uh, like Heidi Roach and she's she uh, is 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 one of the folks that that requests that one uh, pretty regularly. Uh, that's just become a kind of a special song for me because I know yeah. the people that have been there. Uh, kind of get it, you know. Hmm. Well, you know, I'm 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 a little I'm curious about your your process. I don't want to dive too deep into your songwriting process at this particular moment, but I'm I'm wondering if if interacting with um, with knowing that you, that you have interaction with with this population has it changed the way you write your music at all? Like, are you, do you do you think about the the messages and 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 how you write your songs differently? I don't. I don't think it's it's it, um, changed my approach craft wise. Right. It's certainly it's changed me um, mm. profoundly. So it couldn't help but change my my music because it's, the music is just expressing, you know, the way I process life and and mm. what I'm learning. Uh, there's probably well, I know for sure because when I do my shows at the prison, the whole set list is c- composed of songs that came out of my work with the guys. Ah. Um, so. It's you know, uh-huh. and and that that's when when the, the the style of music is a barrier when when yeah you're you're talking you're talking to a group of strangers they've never seen a, a, never even heard of a, a folk musician, <laughs> and and let alone me right um, so they're not that they're not they're not all they're not anticipating really connecting with what's going on but maybe they're coming to the concert because it's something different you know. And usually they'll hear something in the first couple lines of a song, and they'll say, "This guy's t- trying to tell the truth," you know. Mm. And that transcends any stylistic choices uh, that you would make, you know, with the kind of music that you do. So the, the fact that the, they can tell that I've been I've been paying attention, that I've been listening uh, listening deeply for a long time. Wow. 
Wow. Um, wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a, a little lost for words on, on how to engage with, with these ideas because they're, they're, they're so significant. Um, do you ever, do you ever find that? Do you ever, do you ever have like an idea land on you and like, like how, okay. So how do you take these very large and very sensitive topics that, that you're confronted with and, and kind of filter them through lyrics and music? Do, do you have a process that you follow? Do you, do you set out with, with the big idea in mind that you're trying to convey and, um, no, I, I, I honestly don't have a, uh, like a, a plan. process. No a plan. plan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Going back to that plan. I it's, it's, it's as if, if, if you're having a conversation with somebody and you keep coming back to a central point, yeah. you know, uh, that central point might be, become the chorus of your song. You know, because you uh, work down the road a little bit. But remember, we said, you know, oh, yeah, there it is again, the plan. Oh, yeah, there, there's the plan. See how the plan keeps coming up? All of a sudden, the plan becomes the chorus of the song. Springsteen, in, uh, in something I saw him, I guess it was his uh, uh, interview with Stephen Colbert last weekend. I think I was telling you about it. Yeah. It, was, it was so great because as, as, as he was, as I've been sitting in front of my computer now for the last eight weeks while I'm doing my shows. And I'm, I'm, I'm gotten spoiled because I'm putting the lyrics up on the screen, you know, so I don't have to worry about if I, if I completely boot this, I can look down and see him. And, and, as, and as Bruce is there, I'm thinking, you know, I don't, he may have lyrics, but I don't see where he's, he don't, I can almost, I, and then he forgets the words to the song. <laughs> it's a brand new song on a brand new album. He forgets the words. Now he, and he just laughed it off, you know. Right. And this is a taped show. And so if that were me, I would, oh, we got to start all over again. We do the segment over again. And I thought it was just so great that, you know, the guy's just being a, a, a person. A human. And it gave me permission to screw up tonight <laughs> or, or whenever I do. Um, so uh, I, got off, I got off the topic. But I, well, I, I'll tell you a, a song that, that I'm going to write uh, a couple days ago. Um, I looked out on the backyard and um, I saw a blur. It was a hawk, and he was in, diving for a group of birds. We have a bird feeder out there, and some and some doves were on the ground because they were too big for the bird feeder, and they were on the ground. And one of the doves just tore, you know, straight for my screen in porch to elude the hawk. Came right through uh, the screen like he just punched a hole in the screen, oh. and and he's flapping all around on the, on the back porch. Hawk missed him, so it was a good deal. And, and, and he sat himself down, and so I went out and I opened the screen door, and I'm going, Mr. Dove, you know, whenever you're ready, you can leave. And my wife goes, she goes, he doesn't, he's, he's just going to sit there looking at the screen for the next two hours, you know. So she went over and she picked him up, and she took him out into the yard and, and let him go. And I had this picture of her holding the dove, and there's just something in, in her face uh, that touched me so much, and I thought, I, I have to tell this story in a song. Wow. And I think she did the same thing to me when we met, you know? Oh, I think in geez. a way, she, she, she saw me when I was flailing about, and, and when I was, you know, and, and, and she found a way to hold me and, and distill me, you know, to distill my fears and, 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 and set me back on my wings a little bit. And so that was the, that's the kernel for what will, I, I hope, sometime, sometime not too de mm. far distant be a, be a song. So right now it's in the stage where while I'm out taking my daily run, I just go back and I think about, I think about the, the picture that I took of Beth holding the dove and, and words will start to come in or... And, but it, at some point, it'll, it, it's, it's kind of like that piece of sand in the oyster. It's not a pearl yet. It's just, it's just something Whoa. that's percolating a little that's bit. That's so cool. Well, wait, can you, can you give us a little bit more of a sneak peek? Like, are there any lines that are currently being formulated? Any mm -hmm. lyrics that are... No, I'm not going to go no, there. Oh, you're not going to yeah, do that? No. Oh, no. It's still, still too... Uh, All right. I'm, you know what? Since I mentioned Beth, I'm going to do a, a song that... Uh, I wrote especially for her. I'm just 
Just an old piece of hickory Time is just God's pocket knife Years ain't taking what I need Half the time of my life Cause after all these years together and After all we've been through I'm still as crazy as ever Crazy as ever for you Sunlight in your hair My silver, the moon and the stars Those vagabond midnight companions Whisper your name in the hours And all of the miles are lonesome And all of my dreams can come true Long as this road that I travel Still leads my love back to you After all these years together After all we've been through I'm still as crazy as ever Crazy as ever Say what don't kill you This makes you strong in the end I'm Not sure that's true with a lover I'm Not sure that's true with a friend So thank you for not giving up, dear I'm This stubborn fool or his songs my love ain't always easy But I swear to God it is strong After all these years together After all we've been through I'm still as crazy as ever Crazy as ever for you Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, my buddy Harvey and I uh, released an album over the summer called Take Cover. We formed a little band in lockdown called Hondo Jenkins. And, and it's all, uh, all cover tunes. Uh, and this is one that's from the, from the record by the, by the amazing uh, Bill Withers. Sometimes in our lives We all have pain We all have sorrow But if we are wise We know that there's Always tomorrow Lead on me Where you're not strong I'll help you carry on Oh, it won't be long I'm gonna need somebody to lean No, Please swallow your pride 
That's a good one. Tell us about that album. What, is is that out? Is that out on the? Yeah, it's oh, available yeah. on all digital platforms. All digital platforms. The band's called Hondo Jenkins, and Hondo the, Jenkins. The, the album's called Take Cover. And and are, are, how, so, how are you uh, recording and uh, collaborating during all of this quarantine business? Well, that that goes to Harvey uh, coaching me uh, with that tech stuff again because oh, yeah. uh, you know we we did it from our respective locations. Uh, he lent me some gear, and it was almost like in those movies where the control tower is talking the civilian into landing the jetliner, you know. Uh, uh, you know, pull up, pull up, you're too hot. <laughs> um, but with a lot of patience and a lot of trial and error, I was able to record the, 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 my main tracks, and then, uh, uh, you know, he, he plays almost every instrument God ever made, and, and uh, so he, he kind of produced the record at, at his studio, so... Well, that's wonderful, and and uh, and tell us about. Are, are you working on uh, some some new solo material as well? Uh, definitely am. As a matter of fact, I uh, I think this is this the song I'm going to sing you now is a, is a brand new one, and I think it's going to be the the title song. We were mostly done the record anyway, but uh, this one just just kind of came out of nowhere. It's called hmm. Folk Me. All right. Rock me. I've been rocked before. I don't need you to jazz me up with all this hard to play chords. Just need to let something earnest get under my epidermis. Fog me, baby. Fog me, baby. against hip-hop I think that music is dope <laughs> Just need more hip for this heavy I need more hop in my hope Play that guitar cause I'm eager Dear some Guthrie and Seeger This machine kills fascists This machine kills fascists Head to surrender. Fuck me, baby. Sing something simple and true. Fuck me, honey. Like only a folky can do. Uh huh. Fuck me, baby. And justice, songs about peace and love. I'm weary of cynicism. I need me some kumbaya. Someone's singing, Lord. Someone's praying, Lord. Someone's crying, Lord. Kumbaya, yeah, 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 yeah. Something simple and true Fuck me, honey Like I want to fuck you Fuck me, baby Play some Dylan and Oaks Fuck me, honey Everybody get fucked Hear the real stuff. Fuck me, honey. 
I'm going to do you a song that uh, I was asked to write by a woman named Jennifer Thompson. Uh, Jennifer was the subject of a frontline documentary called What Jennifer Saw, and it tells the true story of how she made a terrible mistake and she picked the wrong man out of a police lineup. And her testimony was used to send Ronald Cotton to prison for life. And Ronald served 11 years of that sentence before DNA was used to prove his innocence, and he was set free. And uh, he went looking for Jennifer to tell her that he had forgiven her. Uh, and his forgiveness profoundly changed her life. And they became the dearest of friends. Uh, and they wrote a book together called Picking Cotton. Uh, and anyway... Uh, I think the plan is at some point that the book's going to become a film. And so Jennifer asked me if I would write a song for the movie. It's called Mercy. Long for peace and so your spirit Laid your anger down to stay free from your prison You forgave me trapped within a heart that hated I too was incarcerated By scars someone else inflicted Never could I have predicted Mercy saved my life Cause mercy found me when I was thirsty Condemnation Salvation first could not ask for the first redemption cried your word be blessed by this mercy and sweet forgiveness so much had been taken from me fear and rage I felt help numb me to wounds even I could not see to my very humanity you reached but I doubted when you told them you forgave me then you met me and I realized that I saw within your eyes mercy saved my life because mercy he went out Your words be blessed by this mercy and sweet forgiveness, sweet I had been your judge and jury Enraged every time you pleaded Innocent though you proceeded To prove though you felt forsaken In those years that I had taken From this wrong could come some justice And now you've taught me to trust this mercy My life becomes worse Be when I was first Retribution
Thanks, everybody. Daniel, thank you so much for the chance to do this tonight, man. John, thank you so much for being here. My goodness, this was such a treat. Absolutely loved having you here. Thank you for being on Sound Boost Sessions. And uh, friends in the comment section, thank you for being here as well. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your clicks. And, uh, and of course, it's not too late to head on over and, uh, and make some contributions. Uh, we are sharing the links on the screen right now as I, as I mention it. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, of course, this is our show, Sound Boost Sessions. We do this every week. Uh, usually Fridays and Saturdays, though that's going to change soon. Uh, tomorrow night we have the tremendous uh, group from Philadelphia called Ndichu, and next week Stella Ruse will be here. So big thanks to John Flynn. Big thank you to WXPN. Thank you to our sponsors who are here uh, supporting us live. Thank you to Allison in the comment section, and thank you to you at home. That's our show. Uh, good night, everybody, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, I hope.